Hey guys, it's me again. Yeah, it's been quite the fall for us. We scored a victory at Saratoga, but Brandywine and Germantown went to the Redcoats. Yeah, Washington, you can't forget that we captured your capital of Philadelphia. Ah, thanks for the reminder. Ben Franklin here, sorry running a bit late. Been busy in France twisting their arms to join our cause in the war. Let's talk about Valley Forge. Well, morale wasn't great within the Continental Army because Philadelphia had fallen and winter was closing in. When the Continental Army marched into Valley Forge, Pennsylvania on December 19, 1777, they were cold, hungry, and tired. As I like to say about Valley Forge, it was a dreary kind of place and uncomfortably provided. It was a strategic location, only 20 miles from the British-occupied Philadelphia, so we were far enough away to avoid a surprise attack but close enough to keep an eye on the Redcoats. Oh dear, it was one dreary and freezing place, and oh, no one bothered to tell us that we'd be here for six months. Yikes. Trust me, we weren't going to leave Philly city life for Valley Forge in the middle of the winter. Washington was crazy. Well, his troops were. Washington lived okay while at Valley Forge. Over 12,000 people were encamped at Valley Forge, including soldiers, women, and children. A big mix of people included a number of African American and Native American soldiers. It was so bad that as many as 3,000 of my men, nearly a fourth, were rendered unfit for service. They were starving, and their bloody feet turned the ice and snow red. Valley Forge left us in truly difficult conditions, no clothing, no provisions, and as disheartened as you could possibly imagine. I mean, just look at the type of huts that we had to build and live in. I was disheartened too. I had asked the state governors and Continental Congress for food and supplies, but didn't receive much help. I even had to send some of my men foraging for provisions in the areas surrounding Valley Forge to get the supplies that we needed. Although it was very tough on Washington and his men, the general was a steady leader, and there was not one mass desertion or mutiny at Valley Forge even in the light of the horrendous conditions. Unfortunately, over 2,000 of the men died due to disease and illness. John Adams and others were badmouthing me and saying that we needed a new leader of the Continental Army, so the heat was really on me to deliver. I was really psyched when Baron Frederick von Steuben arrived in February 1778. Yes, George, you can thank me for getting von Steuben to Valley Forge. I was introduced to him while in France finessing the great art of diplomacy. I wrote to General Washington saying he should accept the services of this fine officer. Von Steuben had served as senior officer in the Prussian army under Frederick the Great during the Seven Years' War. I was picked as one of a handful of colonial troops under von Steuben. He was a real drill master, not cutting us any slack. He terrified us with his explosive temperament, but we respected him for his knowledge of battlefield tactics and discipline. Von Storben was a great disciplinarian. He completely revamped how the soldiers fought in a more efficient and professional manner. Von Storben reduced the time it took the Continental soldiers to reload and fire muskets by over a third. Much of Von Storben's training was captured in the blue book that would be used by the U.S. Army for years to come. While the winter and spring at Valley Forge was very different, we were a changed army for the better. We were more professional and disciplined, and we had proved how much we cared about independence. Enough to survive a nasty winter with bloody feet. Great news, I'd been in Paris since 1776, negotiating with the French to join the war on our behalf. France certainly had no love for Britain. So in 1778, we signed the Treaty of Alliance with France, and officially France joined the war against Britain. The real test of von Steuben and Washington's Valley Forge training came in June 1778. The British were getting antsy with the French having just joined the war, so they had to make some moves. British troops pulled out of Philadelphia and started to make their way to New York through New Jersey. I knew this was the time to strike. The British were on the move to New York and I wanted to test our newly trained soldiers from Valley Forge. This was our moment to prove ourselves. I was part of General Lee's initial force to engage with the British at Monmouth. However, General Lee got cold feet when he thought we were being encircled by redcoats near the courthouse. Yeah, my troops got the upper hand early on and we saw Lee's troops retreating. Oh, it was a glorious sight. I was checking on the troops and Lee's progress when I realized they were in retreat. This infuriated me. I was livid at General Lee, so I dismissed him and took charge of the situation. And I immediately laid out a defensive line on the battlefield. It was blazing hot on the battlefield, felt like an inferno. This was the first time we competently fought the British with bayonets thanks to our training at Valley Forge. 
There were attacks and counterattacks by both sides throughout the hot afternoon, with numerous casualties. After a long day, both sides stopped fighting and more or less called it a draw. I moved my men overnight to a spot not far from the battlefield, but I had a plan to evacuate my men overnight, get on the road back to New York. I was anticipating a new battle the next day. When the sun rose, I sent some scouts out to check on the British, and lo and behold, they had left. That's one for us. Ah, uh, you gotta be kidding, George. Before Monmouth, we were on our way to New York anyways. We ended up hitching a free ride with our highly esteemed British Navy to New York. Shortly after Monmouth, Washington marched his troops to New York, and interestingly enough, both sides were back to the same battle lines as two years before. 